Okay, welcome back. Now the demo I'm going to do, I'm calling beads on the ring. So I have this um, ring here. The diameter is 26 centimeters, right? And I have uh, taped a, a post to it, and then I can rotate this about this post at a certain period of revolution, right? So I can say based on the period of revolution that I do, the quicker I do them, the farther up the ring the, the beads will move, right? So if I do them really quick, okay? You see, they're kind of around here. So if I do quicker, they can move higher up the ring, right? So based on a, a certain period of revolution of that, right? So the beads are somewhere around here. So what I want to find out is calculate what is their location, depending on the period of revolution, right? The period of revolution, this, we're going to measure that in seconds, right? This is the physics of this, right? Okay. So we have a free body diagram of the object will look like this. It's on a ring. There's a normal force pushing it towards the center of the circle, right? And then we have here mg, right? So then we can break the forces into components. We can say, let this angle be theta, right? So if that angle is theta, this is a mg. This angle is also theta, right? So this angle here is a theta. So we can say n cosine theta is mg, n cosine theta is mg, and then we can say n sine of theta is equal to mv squared over r, right? Where r is the radius of the circle that it's making, this effective radius of the circle, right? So then I can divide these two, then the n cancels, we have tangent theta is equal to, the m's cancel, v squared over rg. Right, but I want to express this in terms of the in terms of the period of the motion. Right, in the past we've done this with other problems where we say velocity is two pi r over period. Right, two pi times the effective radius divided by the period. Then we put it in here. We get here four pi squared r squared over the period squared, and then we have here r g. One of the r's cancels. And we get here tangent of theta is 4 pi squared r over g period squared. Okay, so one of the r's canceled. And so I can call this r little r, right? That means that's the effective radius of the path. So let's call that one little r. Okay, so then I can relate based on the geometry of the case, right? I can say this is a little r and this is theta, right? And then this is the radius of the circle, of the actual ring itself, right? So then we can say um, sine of theta is equal to what? Um, r over r, right? So then we can say r is equal to r sine of theta, okay? big R sine of theta over G times the period squared, okay? What is my goal? My goal is to come up for an equation for the theta, the theoretical theta where the, the bead will rest, right? So we can say here, this is sine over cosine, right? Sine of theta over cosine theta, and then the sine theta, sine theta cancels, right? Okay, and then we can get, uh, so we have one over cosine theta is equal to four pi squared r over the g t squared, right? Then I can cross multiply everything and come up for an expression for cosine theta, okay? So we have here cosine theta is equal to g times the period squared divided by uh, four pi squared r, where r is the actual radius of the, the ring that we are using, right? So in my case, of course, the theta will depend on the period, right? So let us measure 20 cycles of the period and then approximately notice where the beads are resting. Go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay? So it's kind of hard to do this because I'm trying to both time it and do the revolutions. So let's do that again. It came out about nine seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay, so eight point five seconds. So twenty cycles is taking 
8.5 seconds, 5 seconds. So in a good physics problem, what they'll tell you, they'll actually tell you, you have a ring, they'll give you the radius of the ring, they'll give you the period of uh, rotation of the ring, and then they say, what, what is the angle? Or they might ask for the little r, right? So once you know what the angle is, you can always calculate the little r, right? In my case, we actually measured the period, and then we're gonna put it into here, right? And then find out what our angle is gonna be. Okay, so we have here cosine, uh, this is 9.8, right? So the period uh, is going to be 0.425 squared over 4 pi squared. And then the R is going to be half the diameter of the ring, so that's 0.13, okay? So let us calculate that. 69.8 degrees. So it's quite high. It was somewhere here, predicted angle, uh, 70 degrees, right? So that's pretty high, actually. So then... Uh, where, when I did it, where was it, where were the beads? They were kind of like, visually, you can see that the beads were around here, right? Something like that. So you can kind of see, okay, um, if the angle was 69.8, the other problem, the, the other thing that the problem can ask is, what is the R value? What is the little r? So then the little r is going to be R sine of theta, right? So then we can say R is going to be the 0.13 sine of 69.8 okay, meters. Okay, so then what I can do is I can say, okay, I can go like this and then kind of make a visual note of where the bead is at. Okay, then somewhere, somewhere here. Then I can measure the distance between that and the, the center so 12 and a half centimeters right there, okay? So my experimental R came out to be 12 and a half centimeters. So of course, uh, it's kind of visual. You're kind of doing that and you're trying to guesstimate where it is. And then uh, my period itself is kind of not exact because I'm by myself doing it. But you can kind of get the idea of the problem. So what do we learn from this problem? The bigger the period, if the period is big, what does that mean? Okay, that means you're going slow. It's going very, very slow. So if the period is big, what's gonna happen? The angle, the angle is gonna be very small, right? Because they're gonna be kind of down here. So this angle is gonna be small. When the angle is small, the cosine of the angle is big, right? So when the period is big, Cosine of the angle should be big, and that means the angle is actually small, you see? So the, the equation is actually working out. So then, as the period goes smaller and smaller, smaller and smaller, what happens? The cosine of the angle goes smaller and smaller, and then the angle gets larger and larger. So the angle gets larger and larger means that this angle starts getting bigger, 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 and the thing then goes up all the way like this. Now, can the thing ever go more than 90, right? So let's say you're doing so fast that the T almost approaches zero, right? The T approaches zero. What's the greatest that the angle can be, right? So we can say here, the limit of this as, uh, as cosine of theta is zero, what happens? Theta is 90. Theta begins to approach 90. So that means no matter how fast I do this, it can never actually go like this and then supersede a 90. It could kind of approach 90 like this, right? But never actually reach 90. So even if I go very fast, you see, even that's not really 90, right? So you can never actually reach 90, right? But you can kind of get close to it. This is almost like the problem of, you can have a similar problem with the carnival ride that you see in carnivals where students, uh, where uh, children and kids sit on a chair, right? And there is a post like this, right? And then as they speed up, the string starts getting higher and higher. The physics of this and the physics of this is exactly identical. Instead of normal force pushing you up, it's the tension in the rope, right? And then you have here, this is uh, R, and then this is the little r, right? So the same, pretty much physics holds true. So if you spin the person very, very fast, 
the greatest angle that they can approach, right? The greatest angle they can approach is close to 90, but it can never exactly equal 90. So maybe it's gonna be like something like 80, 88 or 87, right? No matter how fast they go, they never go close to 90, they never exactly equal 90, and they never pass 90, okay? So I hope this helps you understand the physics of these kinds of situations, these kinds of situations, then you, you can apply it to beads on the ring, okay? Thank you very much.